Okay, so um, last summer NHGRI uh, convened a workshop uh, to look at the research opportunities uh, associated with the implementing genomics in practice, or what we call the IGNITE network. A major purpose of the workshop was to gather information from the research community about um, how the goals and objectives of IGNITE um, sh uh, should be uh, fine-tuned. Uh, associated with our intention to, um, or at least look at the question of should we renew the uh, IGNITE uh, uh, consortium. So Council Member uh, Shanita, he was Halbert, was, uh, attended that workshop and was a moderator for one of the sessions. And we've asked her to uh, present the report uh, to the Council. And this will serve as a uh, staging or backdrop for the concept that uh, Ebony Madden will next present. Shanita. Okay, thank you. So I'm really uh, glad to have an opportunity to uh, share with you the, the discussion and outcomes of the workshop that was held to discuss the IGNITE uh, some, uh, consortium. And so as you can see here, um, this workshop was held in um, August of last year, and one of the things we wanted to do as part of the workshop was to discuss um, the scientific opportunities for um, the evolving area of clinical genomics uh, implementation and to identify and provide recommendations on directions for the next phase of research. Uh, the workshop also provided um, an opportunity to talk about and review the scientific contributions of the Excite, IGNITE network. So you can see here that um, the IGNITE Network, just a little bit of background about the program, was established in 2013 um, and really serves, I think, as a unique model for exploring um, the science of genomic medicine uh, implementation. Um, and one of the things that we all think acknowledge and we've discussed in this context uh, several times is how difficult it is for integrating uh, genomic information into routine clinical care. And not, IGNITE was established to um, work to find solutions for how to share um, these solutions with the scientific community. So the network consists of diverse um, clinical settings and populations. I think one of the things I remember being really excited about was the diversity of the organizations, which really led to a diversity of the types of patients who were being included in um, the workshop um, and the center projects, rather. The other thing I think is important to acknowledge about IGNITE is that it does provide um, a unique opportunity for linking um, existing efforts in genomic medicine while contributing to the evidence base, uh, supporting genomic medicine, and developing creative real-world solutions. Um, some of those examples of real-world real world solutions include uh, clinical decision support strategies, um, which are really designed to support the integration of genomic information into the electronic health record. Some of the additional goals of IGNITE are shown here, and one is to think about and address uh, genomic literacy, um, which we all know is really critical to the success of integrating or implementing genomic medicine into clinical practice. Um, IGNITE has been dealing with um, the challenges of varying levels of genomic literacy among patients, clinicians, um, researchers, and payers. One of the ways that IGNITE is overcoming these barriers um, is to create educational tools and resources for these different uh, diverse communities. Uh, IGNITE is also, I think, really um, leading the way in how to engage um, stakeholders actively. Um, the other component of IGNITE related to that is that it's developing uh, the evidence base for uh, for demonstrating that genomic medicine can be used to inform patient care through genotyping, uh, sequencing, and family health history. Um, and we really know that these are the, fu the future of medicine. So lastly, um, IGNITE is working to define, share, and disseminate best practices for implementation, uh, diffusion, and sustainability. So the IGNITE network, as I've mentioned, is very diverse. Um, it includes uh, six demonstration projects that have sort of a hub-and-spoke design. Um, IGNITE was funded in two ways, with the first set of grants awarded in 2013. 
uh, and the second grant set of grants were awarded in 2014. Um, and so these healthcare settings are already integrating uh, genomic medicine projects, uh, mainly at academic centers, and they've partnered with um, adopter sites. And so they, they really have, I think, a unique way of thinking about how to um, disseminate best practices in genomic medicine implementation uh, to diverse settings. And what's interesting is that these adopter sites have um, less experience with genomic medicine, so it's really not a case of, you know, the high resource institutions sort of talking with the high resource institutions. It's really thinking about how to improve the, um, the, the performance and the delivery of genomic medicine across all um, different types of settings, one of which is minority serving um, hospitals, family practice, um, and primary care settings and um, military and veteran affairs hospitals. So there's a diversity of, of clinical settings involved in the um, IGNITE network. The coordinating center um, is currently located at Duke University, um, serves as the administrative core for IGNITE. Um, and this center supports and coordinates uh, network activities and engages uh, with external groups to develop um, collaborations and develops methods for facilitating um, the dissemination of best practices uh, from the network. So you can see here that um, the IGNITE centers are located throughout the country, um, and it includes 22 um, institutions here in the U.S., and again, emphasizing the point that it, uh, within the IGNITE network are minority-serving um, hospitals, family practices, primary care settings, um, military and VA hospitals. Um, Non-NHGRI-funded um, affiliate members have also been invited to join the network and develop collaborations, but um, these um, non-affiliated um, members do not receive grant support from NHGRI. Um, these members are really included to increase um, the reach of IGNITE and to represent the diverse um, healthcare settings. So I've mentioned that there are six demonstration projects uh, within IGNITE um, that are examining the challenges of, an, of incorporating genomic medicine into um, healthcare settings. Um, just to kind of summarize what these projects are addressing, so first, um, Duke University is using family health history data to deliver more um, effective healthcare in geographically and ethnically diverse um, clinical care contexts. Um, these investigators are using MeTree, which is a web-based uh, family history and clinical decision support uh, software platform. Uh, the software, I think, which is exciting, was developed um, to be incorporated into the clinical workforce of primary care providers across uh, five different healthcare systems. Um, and what's, I think, a, a unique about this approach is that family health history can be incorporated into a variety of, of um, practice environments and populations. So as a result of this effort, a significant number of patients were found to be at risk for common, complex, and hereditary conditions. Um, and this resulted in one in four patients being recommended uh, for cancer genetic counseling and 18 percent recommended for colonoscopies. And so this systematic approach for risk assessment um, we think is a really powerful tool for increasing the efficiency in the healthcare system and in reducing um, the overuse of expensing testing and resources. So moving on, the um, Ingenious uh, study at in Indiana University is evaluating the impact of implementing um, a CLIA certified pharmacogenomics panel for 24 uh, widely used drugs and 14 genes for 44 variants across a large number of hospital settings which, prim which primarily serve um, a low-income, underinsured, and vulnerable population. Um, a quarter of those who were tested had clinically actionable pharmacogenomic uh, variant that warranted a change in the medication selection or dose. Um, and so one of the things that has been, this has been a, an example of an early success. Um, so, and based on this, institutional leaders at Indiana U University have made um, the decision to expand uh, this model across um, the statewide um, university, um, university health system. 
So the GUARD study is being conducted at Mount Sinai um, in New York, and it's a randomized trial that is uh, working to determine the effects and challenges of incorporating APO-L1 um, information into primary uh, care management of adults who have hypertension um, and self-reported African ancestry. Um, the, pri the, study is, the primary outcomes for the study um, includes uh, blood pressure reduction and renal surve surveillance, um, as well as secondary um, psychobehavioral outcomes. So participants have been really engaged um, in exploring the intersection of race, um, ancestry, genomics, and chronic disease testing um, and chronic disease. Um, and so among the participants who went um, testing for APOL1, um, there, were limit, there was limited concern about testing in general. Um, one of the other findings was that clinic, clinicians expressed a willingness to uh, incorporate testing into uh, patient care if they were equipped with the information to confidently return results to patients um, and to use the results as part of overall patient care and management. So I think this really speaks to some of the um, LC issues that have been raised um, in this, in our council meetings with respect to physician and patient priorities and preferences and concerns. Um, next is the personalized medicine program at the University of Florida, which is using pharmacogenetic testing of cardiac um, catheterization patients um, as, a, as an approach for optimizing patient care. Um, patients um, in this study who were tested for uh, the CYP2C19 variants to determine if treatment um, should continue with um, Cologipil, I'm going to mispronounce that, so I'll skip over it, um, or if they should uh, switch to a drug um, to another antiplatelet therapy was warranted. Um, was um, as part of reducing um, adverse effects and the chances for readmission. So those are two really um, key quality indicators that, that I think all healthcare systems are struggling with, which is um, reducing adverse effects and lower, lowering rates of readmission. Um, so this testing um, at this center has uh, prompted the creation of a professional education and training programs for students. Um, and practicing health care providers. Um, the personalized diabetes medicine program at, at the University of Maryland, which as I remember it was one sort of, was very different from the other projects um, that, that are part of IGNITE, um, but it's using a sustainable approach to detect, diagnose, and promote um, individualized therapy for patients who have a monogenic form of diabetes by using a web-based screening tool and follow-up sequencing. And so this combination of screening and testing, um, as a result of this combination of screening and testing, physicians um, have been able to improve the accuracy of diagnosis and reduce unnecessary testing. Um, and so ultimately, this has improved um, patient care and treatment. Um, and so lastly, the Integrated Individualized and Intelligent Prescribing Program, which is um, titled I3P, I think these projects have come up with some really snazzy acronyms, um, is using um, genotyped guided prescribing in two projects. So the first one is the Personalized Cancer Medicine Initiative, which provides um, routine multiplex tumor gene mutation testing for patients who have uh, non-small cell lung cancer and melanoma. And then the pharmacogenomic resource for enhanced decisions in cancer and treatment um, is prospect prospectively testing patients for germline uh, pharmacogenomic variants that are associated with um, responses to target medications um, and places um, genomic results and guidance um, into the, uh, the electronic health record. And so ultimately, their goal is to um, tailor therapy to reduce um, adverse drug side effects based on um, germline and somatic gene variants of known significance. So I think all of these projects really illustrate a couple of points. One is that they have direct clinical relevance and impact on patient care and clinical management. Um, they're dealing with issues that I think all healthcare systems are focused on, such as um, readmissions and um, reducing adverse effects, 
and also addressing a critical, important um, ethical, legal, and social issues related to implementation of genomic medicine into practice. The other thing, way that I think this um, IGNITE has been really important is that it really has worked um, to ensure that there is a diversity um, not only in clinical sites but also in the patients that these um, projects are targeting. So as you can see here, the majority of participants in IGNITE projects are white, non-Hispanic, um, but there's a modest um, number of underrepresented uh, minority groups. One of the things we talked about at the workshop was how to address this issue um, and, 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 and really place um, the inclusion of diverse populations as a priority for um, IGNITE. So some of the contributions that IGNITE has made to genomic medicine are shown here. First in the area of informatics, um, IGNITE has contributed to the knowledge base of how to incorporate genomic information into the electronic health record and how to use uh, clinical decision support um, effectively um, um, in the clinical setting and how to effectively translate um, the relationship between genetic uh, variants and phenotype. Um, the Clinical Decision Support Knowledge Base, or CDS-KB, um, is an online resource, is one example, um, is an online resource that, um, that supports um, sharing clinical decision support experiences um, with the scientific community. And this really does provide a, a great opportunity to reduce redundancies in developing clinical um, support uh, tools and to learn from experienced groups. So there's a built-in uh, dissemination and implementation uh, component to IGNITE. Um, IGNITE has also been very active in developing uh, the evidence base to inform payers about um, coverage decisions. Um, this group has been extremely diligent in identifying the required evidence that supports the clinical utility and validity of genetic testing and working closely with um, the payer community. Um, I think this is really important because, you know, ultimately where the rubber meets the road will be um, the extent to which these tests are covered um, by um, payers. So Ignite and collaborators um, have worked uh, closely together to demonstrate that um, using genetic data to guide um, changes in antiplatelet therapy um, reduce the percentage of deaths, heart attacks, and strokes by nearly half. So it's really showing some clinical out input impact and outcomes. Um, and, and those are the things that we know that payers are really concerned about and interested in is in terms of seeing uh, with respect to their decision making about what to cover and how much to cover. It's also, um, IGNITE has demonstrated that 60 percent of patients who had a genetic deficiency um, were given a, um, a, a, a medication that was more effective. So having um, timely access to this uh, genetic information can reduce um, adverse drug reactions, which we know um, is a significant um, health care cost. So lastly, IGNITE has been addressing uh, the growing need for provider and patient genetic e education. Um, IGNITE has worked to develop guidelines that um, have been developed to help clinicians uh, communicate, more communicate genetic risk information more effectively. Um, and then, so just a, another um, IGNITE contribution to the field of genomic medicine is the Network um, Spark Toolbox, which is shown here. So Spark stands for Supporting Practice Through Application, Resources, and Knowledge, um, and it was developed to provide real-world tools and guidance for genomic medicine implementation. Um, this resource was developed um, with researchers and clinicians um, as the primary target audience, um, although many of the tools are also appropriate for patients or insurance providers. So the toolbox is um, really neat in that it provides access to resources that address um, key challenges to implementing genomic medicine um, through the best practices that have been developed through IGNITE. So um, this will be released, uh, so beginning in summer of 2017, um, the toolbox will be um, one of the things that's featured prominent, prominently um, on the IGNITE uh, website, the IGNITE um, homepage. Um, and so you can uh, 
check out this uh, this link here to sort of check it out and see what it's how it can benefit um, everyone. So one of the things that was accomplished um, as a goal for the workshop was to evaluate um, these contributions of the IGNITE um, projects within the context of identifying gaps and opportunities um, that remain. So two main questions um, were addressed. How do we make um, genomic medicine part of routine clinical care? And what are the outstanding barriers and challenges to genomic medicine adoption? There were, um, the workshop was structured around uh, four research topics, um, which are shown here, uh, genomic medicine implementation in diverse um, healthcare settings and populations, uh, clinical informatics for varied electronic health record systems, um, clinical evidence for genomic medicine sustainability, and economic considerations. And so each panel um, was charged with discussing the state of the science and gaps, um, highlights and opportunities, and moderated a general discussion with the larger group. Attendees included um, IGNITE network members, um, IGNITE external scientific panel members, um, IGNITE affiliate members, and scientists who were engaged in genomic medicine implementation research. So there were a total of 86 participants, including uh, six council members. Um, and so next what I want to do is just briefly describe the recommendations from each of the four sessions. So first, with respect to implementation, um, one of the things that was recommended is that there be more robust collaborations between um, academic and community centers. And as part of this, we should also um, support initiatives that will foster the dissemination of established um, best practices and strategies for genomic medicine implementation. So as we look to moving forward, um, we, it was recommended that um, and acknowledged that it was vital to continue to prioritize inclusion of underrepresented groups um, and increase the participant diversity in, uh, in its research. Um, particularly targeting Latino and Asian patients in genomic medicine studies. So in addition, um, IGNITE can also better focus on different types of diversity um, because race and ethnicity is just um, one aspect of diversity. And so some of the ways that we can think about incre increasing diversity is by considering geographic factors such as um, rural populations and the size of the clinic, so including smaller clinics um, within the network and also considering socioeconomic diversity. Um, also, it was recommended that we, in order, as part of increasing access to genomic medicine among diverse populations, that future genomic medicine research um, should consider collaborating with health insurers um, and other payers. And to this end, um, NHGRI should consider creating uh, a genomic resource, a genomic medicine resource center that has a formalized um, translation services and educational materials, or perhaps a genomics and disparities working group within the NHGRI Advisory Council. Um, with respect to um, clinical informa informatics, it was recognized that one of the key barriers to um, clinical decision support come about um, as a result from organizational boundaries uh, between institutions. So one institution, um, you know, many institutions have different electronic health records, um, and so that leads to the development and use of different clinical decision support systems. Um, so it was recommended that current um, clinical decision support capabilities be characterized, um, and in the future, data and informatics sources for clinical decision, clinical decision support systems um, should be harmonized via um, standard terminology and data exchange standards. Um, participants in the, in the um, workshop also felt that it was critical for, um, to develop uh, interfaces for clinical decision support systems that are capable of transmitting different types of data from many different types of vendors, um, and that this information should be made available to the scientific community um, through a public repository. And it, lastly, it was recommended that the future, that the future NHGRI consortia cons should consider 
um, engaging um, EHR uh, vendors early in developing clinical decision support um, systems so that we can understand this variation and develop a platform that's more responsive to the diversity that exists um, in the electronic health record systems. Um, with respect to clinical evidence, um, workshop participants noted that um, the value of, of large genomic medicine study that span multiple sites. So um, studies that have um, large sample sizes generate um, strong clinical evidence for the benefits of genomic medicine. So one of the recommendations within the context of clinical evidence was that Future studies should be designed with specific outcomes in mind uh, to provide evidence uh, to a, a variety of different stakeholders, such as health insurance companies. Um, evidence of clinical utility and economic impact uh, should also be documented. And to ensure that um, diverse perspectives on what constitutes the benefits and cost of genomic medicine are considered, um, stakeholders from health insurance companies really should be involved. Uh, throughout the study. So future studies can and should um, contrast the trade-offs and cost-effectiveness of standard treatments versus genomic medicine. Um, findings could also be communicated to a broader clinical audience, not just including um, healthcare stakeholders, but also different kinds of clinicians, such as nurses and residents. And finally, um, workshop participants recommended that developing a publicly available curated um, database um, that would be designed to collect and evaluate information stemming from genetic studies um, should be created to synthesize the evidence that's needed to inform uh, decisions. And lastly, um, with respect to economics, um, it was recommended that um, genomic researchers really do work for um, the F strive to demonstrate the society, societal and personal value of genetic testing, and this would include economic viability. Um, in the future, it was also recommended that measures of societal, personal, and economic utility of genomic uh, medicine should be developed and assessed. Um, we all know that genomic medicine has a large number of stakeholders with different priorities, um, including patients and advocates, drug companies, providers. Um, health insurance companies and clinical labs. And so we really do believe that um, these stakeholders should be involved uh, with study development uh, throughout the project to ensure that uh, the most important research questions and outcomes are established from the outset. So it really, we really were advocate, there was an advocate or recommendation that um, a participatory approach be used um, to address these, um, these um, economic issues. Uh, participants also noted that um, very few publications to date have a uh, focus on genetics and economics in tandem, um, partially due to a communication gap. Um, and this really in indicates, indicates a need for interdisciplinary uh, science, uh, team science. Um, NHGRI was also advised to establish an economic uh, data source standards between consortium to improve um, cooperation and transferability among researchers. And so lastly, um, the downstream cost of delivering genomic medicine to patients is not reflected um, in the cost of genetic testing. And there were recommendations to invest uh, in more research to examine um, more the, um, the hidden cost of training, information processing, and data collection. So um, our group is shown here, um, and one of the things that we did as part of the workshop was to bring these recommendations back to the group uh, for, um, pri for, prior, for an exercise in establishing priorities. Um, and so these priorities have facilitated and led to the development um, of the concept for the IGNITE, Ignite 2 um, that Ebony is going to discuss next. So just to conclude, um, I would like to thank the NHGRI staff uh, for their, um, for putting the slide deck together, uh, particularly Heather Junkins, who um, is on maternity leave. Um, we'd also like to take a moment to thank um, all of the participants for their a really thoughtful review and engagement um, and uh, the recommendations <laughs> that they put forth. Um, 
in particular, uh, the, the meeting planning committee um, and the council members who um, took time out of their busy schedules to provide um, recommendations about the next steps for uh, genomic uh, medicine implementation. So thank you uh, again for your attention. Any questions for Shanita? Carol. So was there any discussion about how willing uh, EHR vendors are to conforming to common sets of standards so that information can be shared more easily? So I don't recall that there was a discussion about their level of willingness, but just an acknowledgement that this was an area that was, an, that was needed and that they definitely needed to be included um, at the table as these new as these systems were being developed. I think that that's an important point, you know, whether or not they would want to talk about it, because I would think that there's some proprietary issues that, um, that are involved with, with each different type of EHR. Um, so, but our goal, I think our, the final result of our recommendation is that they needed to be at the table and, you know, not just have Epic or, you know, at the table, but there needed to be others at the table, not to be disparaging against Epic. Um, I think that was a great presentation. I do think with regard to the HR, it's an interesting issue because there are only a few vendors in the big hospital systems, but there are a lot more vendors in some of the smaller hospital mm -hmm. systems that your network probably involves. I did have a question. There seemed to be quite a range of genomic testing, right? It sounded like some of the studies might only be doing a couple of SNPs that are important for specific drugs, and at least one, I think, was sequencing 40 genes, and another was doing a mutation panel. So did the RFA um, allow for kind of that broad a, I was just curious how those very different types of projects interacted with each other. So the RFA that supported this um, round of funding was very broad um, and allowed for institutions to put forth what made sense um, from their institutional perspectives and from their, um, their expertise about, you know, what was relevant and what needed to be addressed from the perspective of genomic medicine. Yep. Yeah, that was quite a um, tour de force. Uh, the, uh, it sounds like the workshop covered incredible numbers of topics. Um, was there any consideration of the overlap or ways that it might be maybe synergized with um, what's going on in the CSER projects? So that was clearly one of the recommendations from the workshop that there be a, um, a greater concerted effort to harmonize um, across all of the different um, initiatives that NH NHGRI is, um, has, is supporting. Um, CSER, I don't recall if it came up specifically, but it must have. I just can't remember that far back. Um, maybe Ebony can provide some insight. That is something that we are planning to do when um, it was brought up, Caesar was going into Caesar two, so we, was wait, we were waiting to Caesar two got established and we're hoping to have a joint meeting and plan a way forward together. We're actually um, considering having joint working groups and everything. Yeah, I, I would say I think that's pretty critical now between Emerge, Caesar, and Ignite. Because uh, now we're all really looking at measures of efficiency, or the plans are all to look at some of the measures you outlined so nicely and to make sure we're using similar measures <laughs> so we can go, even if we're using different patient populations, it would be right. really important. 